weeks ago, my dad passed away after being sick for a really long time. He had been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis a couple of years ago, and he put up a good fight, but eventually he just couldn't do it anymore, and we lost him. It was a huge blow to me emotionally because I was a lot closer to my dad than my mom. I, 18 male, did not know how to feel and I was just beginning to cope with my grief when my mother decided that she was going to kick me out of the house so she could move her boyfriend in with her. Within the span of one week, I lost my dad and I also found out that my mother had been having an affair with a co-worker all along. I don't know if my dad knew about it, but honestly, it doesn't even make a difference. I was disgusted when she brought home her boyfriend just four days after my dad's passing. And we had a huge fight after he left. She told me that this affair had been going on for a really long time, pretty much ever since my dad had been diagnosed. And I did not know how it was to have a sick partner, so I had no idea how difficult it was for her. Which is why I had no right to judge her for finding love elsewhere. She claimed that she knew that she was going to lose her husband at one point, so in her opinion, there was nothing wrong with what she was doing. It was quite pathetic of her and I told her so. The next day, I paid for it because she told me that I had to leave and she didn't want any filth from the past in her home anymore. And she wasn't just referring to me. She and her boyfriend had started packing a bunch of stuff from my dad's room in the morning. And by the time I woke up, there were a bunch of boxes in the front yard. And my mother told me that where I was going, I could either take the boxes with me or I could leave them there so they could burn it. But either way, it was all going out of their house and they gave me a couple of hours to pack all my stuff so I could leave. I decided to utilize my time packing my belongings instead of arguing with them because judging by my mother's behavior, she was too far gone. I did not want to put down my dignity by speaking to her. We had pretty much stopped getting along a couple of months before my dad passed away because she had been fighting a lot with him and I did not think it was right to keep arguing with him about petty things and be so horrible to him, especially when we knew that he was not going to make it. And after I found out about the affair, I had lost all respect for her, so I was quite glad to be leaving. I made a few phone calls and after some time, my girlfriend told me that she could speak to her parents and let me stay with them for a couple of weeks until I get back on my feet and make some other arrangements. I am very grateful for that, since I've been living with them ever since my mother kicked me out, and they've been very kind. Especially my girlfriend, since we've only been dating for three months, and she really didn't need to do this, but I'm very thankful for her. Anyway, on the day that I left, along with my own belongings, I also took the boxes that my mother had thrown out, which were full of my dad's belongings. I figured that I definitely could not let them burn it since that would mean losing the last bit of whatever my father had left behind. It ended up with my room being extremely cramped because of all the stuff that was in there, but it was worth it. For the past couple of days, I had been avoiding even looking at those boxes, let alone going through them. The reason for that was quite simple. It reminded me too much of my dad and I was just not ready to go through it. I knew that it would end up with me crying on the floor because I missed him so much already. So I had been avoiding it like the plague. But two days ago, I made up my mind that I was going to go through some of the boxes no matter how hard it was. And I got incredibly lucky because the first box that I picked was full of documents and paperwork from my dad's room. Before he was moved to the hospital in the last few weeks of his life, he was working out of his room in the house since he was in no shape to go out every day. My father was working as a tax consultant in a huge firm, so there was a lot of paperwork about that and I didn't understand most of it, so I just kept it aside. I kind of made my way to the bottom of the boxes and and there, 
I found a blue manila file with my name on it. And that was it. And what I found in there is going to finish my mom. And I'm here for it. On going through the contents of that folder, I found out that my dad actually had left a will. And my mother probably had no idea. Well, maybe she did and just wasn't telling the lawyer. Not just the will, I also found a bunch of other documents, including the deed to the house, which said that it did not belong to both my parents, but only to my father. After reading the will, I realized that my dad had left the house and all the money that had remained in his account to me. My mother had received his car, which was a big deal because my dad drove a pretty nice car, and the ownership of their vacation home. I realized that my mother had absolutely no right to kick me out of the house because it did not even belong to her anymore or at any point in time. First, it belonged to my father and now it belongs to me. So far, my dad's lawyer had told me that his assets were going to remain frozen until the court had come up with a way to decide how his assets were going to be divided. However, after I found those documents, I called him up immediately and, and told him what I had found. So I invited him to my girlfriend's house and asked him if it would be possible for me to move back into my own house because my dad clearly stated in the will that the house belonged to me, not my mother. And he told me that I was definitely free to do that if I wanted to because my mother had to kick me out in the first place at least not without proper notice. That was all that I needed to know. He could deal with the execution of the will, but I was going to deal with the situation with my mom. I called her up immediately afterwards, and I told her that I had found out about the will that my father had left. He had stated that the house was going to be left to me, and so was all the money in his bank account. She was silent for a couple of minutes and said that it did not matter to her. But I told her that now that the tables had turned, I wanted her to leave the premises because the house had never really belonged to her. Neither had she ever done anything to earn it. She had been horrible to my dad and now she was being horrible to me. So I told her that I wanted her out by the end of this week and that's when she started groveling. To be honest, I had actually expected her to start arguing with me because that's how she has always been argumentative and nasty to everyone around her. Instead, she started begging me not to say anything or do anything because she had convinced her boyfriend to move in with her by telling him that she would handle everything for him. Apparently, her co-worker had also been married but had recently filed for a divorce and his ex-wife was demanding a huge amount of alimony, which was fair enough because he had cheated. So, he had been worried about it and my mother had told him that she would handle it all for him, which meant that she would let him stay with her so he did not have to worry about where he would live or about rent and other miscellaneous expenses. He could just focus on his divorce. Now, if I came up to them and said that the house did not even belong to her, she would be screwed. So if I decided to talk to her boyfriend, not only would she end up without a place to live, but she would also end up alone. I'm not a cruel person, so I told my mother that she was free to continue acting like she had the means to salvage the situation for her boyfriend, but I definitely did not want her to live in my house anymore. So I told her that I would not breathe the word of what she had said to me just now to anyone. If she promised me that she would leave the house by the end of this week, I honestly don't care where she went. I just wanted her out of the house so I could move back in. Then she started telling me that this was not fair because it was straight up blackmail and I couldn't do this to her. But I brought up how unfairly she had treated me just a couple of days ago. So it was pretty laughable that she was expecting me to think about her situation right now. And I did not think that I was being unfair. After arguing with me for a bit, she started crying on the phone and said that she just couldn't believe that I was being this way with her just because she had wanted to be happy in her life for once. She said that she hadn't even wanted to get married to my father, but she was already pregnant with me and so her family had forced her to. And apparently my father had never treated her well. 
he had always been too involved in his work and never had enough time for her. So now she was just trying to have a happy life with her boyfriend. And the only reason she had even kicked me out was because she knew that I was just like my father and I was not going to stand for her happiness. And all that I was doing was proving her right. I didn't know what to say to her at that point. So I just told her that she had one week and then I hung up. I have been feeling kind of guilty since then. I don't know why, but hearing her cry like that on the phone just made me feel very bad. I don't know if it's because I'm actually doing something worth feeling guilty over, or maybe it's just because I'm a sensitive person. I can't stand to hear people cry. I'm a bit confused, so I'm here to ask. AITA because I told my mother that she and her boyfriend have one week to give up their house. Edit. I don't have anybody from my family living in the States, so I couldn't ask them for help, and I had to rely on my friends. I have spoken to my grandparents since I'm starting college in a couple of months, so I'm going to need their help to cover the expenses. After I had explained to them the kind of situation I was in, because of my mother, all of them had cut her off. I can't say she's any worse for it, since she never really got along with her own parents and only had a civil relationship with her in-laws. And about the will, I don't really know exactly why my father had left the house and all his money to me, or why he hadn't spoken to his lawyer about it. I did ask my dad's lawyer about it, and apparently he had been pushing for him to create a will ever since he had been diagnosed, but my dad kept saying that he would do it later. Now, apparently, what he had left was a holographic will. Since there were no witnesses or a lawyer involved, and it might make it easier for my mother to contest it, but we will cross that bridge when we come to it. Thankfully, in the state that we live in, even wills like these are considered valid, and I'm guessing that my dad must have known about it. As for why exactly he had left the most important things to me, I'm guessing it's because he had probably written this document when he was at home. And my mother had been fighting with him a lot over nothing in particular. She was just fighting with him because she could and he couldn't exactly leave her no matter how frustrated he felt. I guess that's why he made this decision and I think it was a good choice. Anyway, to answer your questions, I don't really know my dad's exact reasons, but this is my theory. Update 1. Hi, so I'm still living with my girlfriend and after reading the comments, I decided to change my mind. I'm still going to demand that my mother move out of the house, but I'm going to change the terms of my condition a bit. After posting that edit, a lot of you said that I should probably think about the fact that my mother can contest the will and that would lead to a lot of trouble for me. And I thought about it and you guys were right. I wasn't thinking about it at first, so... I decided to call my mother back and I told her that I was now ready to give her six months to find a place and move out of the house. She seemed pretty surprised when I said that because we hadn't spoken since our last conversation, so she didn't have an explanation for this change of heart. But I also told her that since I was giving her six months, I also wanted her to promise that she was not going to contest my dad's will. Hopefully, Six months would be enough time to prove the validity of the will in court, and eventually we would be able to start the division of the assets. And I guess six months will be enough for my mom's boyfriend to figure out his divorce as well. Personally, I would have much rather preferred to cause a lot of trouble for my mother and ask her to leave within a week and make sure that she felt just as awful as I had. But well, needs must. Right now, it's more important for me not to act rashly because that would only lead to trouble for me and not her. She has told me that she's going to think about it before agreeing to anything and well, let's see what she says. Update two. Hi, so three weeks back, I told my mother that I wanted her to promise me that she would not contest the will and I would let her stay in the house for six more months. I was going to be leaving for college in three months anyway, so I figured that for those three months, I would just ask my grandparents to send me some money so I could get an apartment because I did not want to bother my girlfriend by living with her for so long. But her parents insisted that 
I had to stay with them. And even though we have only been together for three months, my girlfriend and I really love each other. So she said the same thing and my living situation was sorted. I was in no hurry to have my mother leave the house since it didn't even make sense. I was kind of hoping that she would agree to my terms so I could get my dad's lawyer to sign off on it as well because if she entered a legal contract, she wouldn't be able to back out of it. I was looking forward to hearing back from her with good news, but instead, she called me up today and the first thing that she asked me was if I expected her to sign any paperwork or contacts for this condition that I had. I immediately said yes because I did not want to mislead her and I definitely did not trust her. So this was a given. She thought about it for a couple of seconds and then she told me that if she had to sign a contract then she was not interested in this agreement. That really annoyed me because it essentially just meant that if she knew that she had to stick to it or there would be consequences then she was not sure about whether she was going to be able to make any promises. I was very blunt with her and I told her that if she was not ready to sign off on a legal agreement with me, then my deal was off the table. I told her that I did not trust her in the slightest and she should not be surprised since her behaviour in the recent past has been nothing short of absolutely horrible towards me. I thought that she was going to argue with me, but she just told me that she agreed. But she also didn't trust me, since after all, I definitely was my father's son. I didn't understand what that had to do with everything, because as far as I was concerned, neither my father nor I had ever done anything to be referred to as untrustworthy. The only thing that she had against my dad was the fact that she had been forced to marry him because she got pregnant with me, and my grandparents thought that it would be the best way to go ahead with the situation. That's not my fault, and neither is it my father's fault. If she didn't want to marry him, she should have fought for her rights. Besides, I'm not even sure how true that was, because I had spoken to my grandparents about it, and they had said that they hadn't exactly forced her, but they had just advised her against raising me on her own, because... At the time, she was really young, and my parents seemed to love each other, so both my grandparents had suggested that they get married. But there was no pressure on them as such. And the other problem that my mother had with my dad was that he worked too much. I don't even think that's a real problem because, of course, he had to do it. My mom did not even work in the first few years of their marriage and only started working recently, around seven years ago. She was able to get that job because one of her friends and her husband had started that company. Otherwise, she wouldn't have even been able to find that job that she constantly kept bragging about. Right now, she could say that she was an independent woman, but that was only because my dad had supported her from the beginning. So she had no right to tell me that she did not trust me because I was my father's son. I was really annoyed with her. So I told her that she was free to do whatever she wanted, but since she was not going to sign a contract, I wanted her out of the house then. She was about to say something, but before she could, I hung up and she tried to call me several times after that. But I'm just too annoyed to speak to her right now. In the past half an hour, she hasn't called again, but I know that she will, but I am only going to speak to her after I call down. Update three. My mother did not call me again after the last conversation we had, which I had mentioned in my last update. I kept waiting for her to call for the next two days, but she only called me today. I was kind of nervous because I didn't know what to expect, to be honest. On one hand, I really wanted her to sign off on the deal that I had suggested, that I let her live in the house for six months until she's able to make other arrangements for herself. And in return, she doesn't contest the will. I thought I was being really fair, but after the last argument we had, I didn't know if she was going to agree to it now. So when she called me up today, I tried to be as polite and civil as possible because this was not just about her. I had something to lose as well. I had been hoping for good news, but unfortunately, 
As soon as I picked up the phone, she told me that she had made her decision and she had decided she was not going to sign any contract. Instead, she was definitely going to be contesting the will and she even spoke to a lawyer regarding it as well. I was taken aback because that obviously meant that she was not going to be living in the house anymore since it belonged to me. And I told her that if she was going to contest it, it meant that she was no longer going to live in my house anymore. I thought that it would bring her back to her senses, but she just told me that I had no right to take her out because so far, the will hasn't even been approved as valid. And she had a point, but it also meant that she had no right to kick me out either since we are in a bit of a gray area right now. So I told her that we were probably just going to have to all live together until the probate was over. Obviously, that idea made her really uncomfortable. And after a couple of seconds, she told me that she was going to find a place to live, but she was going to take her own sweet time because I had no right to tell her what to do. Once again, I told her that she was free to take as much time as she wanted, but I was going to move back in by the end of this week. Then she started yelling at me and said that I was being a complete nuisance and she had done absolutely nothing to deserve this kind of harassment that I was putting her through. I almost did a spit take at that point because my harassing her was the biggest joke of the century. Anyway, she just kept trying to yell at me but I just hung up because I didn't think we had anything more to talk about. She has made her decision and I don't think I can influence it anymore. So I'm going to do whatever I think is the right thing to do. And she can't stop me either. And she just has a measly, stupid boyfriend who's going through a divorce himself. So I don't think he's going to be any help to her. Whereas I have the rest of my family and even my girlfriend and my friends on my side. In fact, I think I'm going to tell him the truth about my mother because I think I have held back for long enough. But now, since she has made up her mind, I have decided to be an inconvenience. I don't think that's the reason for me to keep this secret anymore. Update four. I did it. I told my mom's boyfriend the truth about the situation with the house. I don't think he had any idea so far. I don't know how since he was living with my mother and this is a pretty big deal to be hiding from your boyfriend. Besides, she was in touch with me and I'm sure he would have had questions about it, but I guess she's really good at hiding secrets and I shouldn't be surprised since she hid her affair really well for a couple of years. It was not very difficult to find a way to contact him. I just had to look him up on Facebook and once I had him, I sent him a message along with the proof. I also told him exactly why I was telling him the truth right now when I hadn't done so for the last couple of weeks since I was trying to negotiate with my mother, but she had made it very clear that she was not interested. So I felt like he had the right to know what the truth was. I sent that message two days back and today I finally heard back from my mother. I was expecting some outburst of the sort, but I didn't think it would come so late. Anyway, she tried to call me in the morning, but just to frustrate her, I decided to block her. Then I proceeded to block her on social media as well. Eventually, with no other way to reach me, she decided to create a false email account and send me a message from that address. She told me that she hoped I was happy now since I had created a bunch of drama between her and her boyfriend for no reason, and he had decided to leave her and go back to his wife to try and work things out. And he was blaming her for the entire situation, which he's right about. So I don't even understand what she's mad about. Anyway, it was a really long message about how she was going to make sure that I paid for this heavily. And all I could think of was that she could bring it on. Truth be told, she doesn't scare me anymore. I've already lost whatever I had to lose. And now there's only one way to go and that's up. So I'm really looking forward to the court case. Update five. Hi guys, so I haven't updated you guys on what has been happening in my life for the past year and I think it's about time that I do so. Like I said, I was looking forward to the court case so my mother did actually end up contesting the will and the case went to court. My dad's lawyer and I decided to fight as hard as we could and long story short, after eight long months, we were finally able to get a verdict in our favor. 
The will was definitely valid and it was going to be upheld. This happened two months ago and I'm still really happy about it. She had to give up the house and we don't have any contact with her anymore. So I don't know what she's up to, but I'm glad that she got her karma. Even her own parents are not in touch with her anymore. So I'm pretty sure that she can't be leading a happy life right now. My neighbors told me that the day she left, her boyfriend had come to help her out. So I'm guessing that maybe they're back together again because I'm pretty sure that no self-respecting woman would take back a man who had cheated. So I'm sure that the guy's wife had rejected him and he had to come crawling back to my mother to patch things up. And my mother, being the person she is, had gladly taken him back. Honestly, I'm glad that they're back together because they deserve each other. I'm pretty sure my dad's there smiling at me from heaven because I've proven myself to be his son, resilient and strong and always standing for the right thing. I'm in college right now, about to start my second year. My grandparents are supporting me financially for now and they're going to do so until I have a job. So I'm very grateful for them. I know a lot of you want to know what's going on with my girlfriend. She's also in college and we meet on the weekends every time. We are even planning a short getaway, just the two of us this weekend. So we're still going pretty strong and we plan on taking this forward since we are pretty serious about each other. Right now, life is pretty peaceful and I'm very happy that I'm at this stage because getting here was the hard part. After this, everything seems like a piece of cake. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.